Okay guys, here is a bonding summary. So this is just the very, very basics of all the types of bonds that we've covered so far, that being ionic, metallic, and covalent. So a summary on bonding. Here's the first page for our summary on bonding. Um, you can see we have metallic here, ionic here, and covalent. This is to do with the properties and a quick uh, image of what they look like. So metallic bonds, as you know, uh, we've covered it. They are strong, they have a high melting point, they conduct electricity, they're malleable, that means they bend easy, and they are lustrous, which means they're quite shiny. Ionic compounds are brittle, they have a very high melting point, a very high melting point indeed, actually. They, as a solid, they do not conduct electricity, so no electricity. As a solution, so when they're dissolved, they do conduct electricity and they show some solubility. So some ionic compounds are soluble and some are not. Covalent bonds, on the other hand, they have a very low melting point. They don't conduct electricity at all and some of them are soluble. So these properties you should be able to explain using the diagrams below. So metallic bonds, basically you need to be able to explain what the forces are within our metallic bonding structure and how it relates to these properties here. Remember that um, the forces are your positive cation and these little circles here are delocalized electrons. All of these can be, ex can be used to explain these properties. Metallic, sorry, the ionic compounds, they have cations and anions lined up separately. So every um, one next to it is different, so it'll be positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. These are ionic compounds where you have an anion and a cation locked in together. Covalent compounds or covalent molecules, I should say, are these little individual molecules that are bouncing around. So you have um, some atoms which are joined together in a covalent bond but these molecules are separate to one another. So you have atoms joined as a covalent compound, covalent bond. That doesn't really explain these properties. What explains these properties is your intermolecular forces between the two, um, to, between two molecules. So the covalent compounds or the covalent molecules are to do with intermolecular bonds between two molecules. The inside of these, you don't really care too much about in terms of the properties, um, but there's the ones in between these two molecules that you do care about. Here is a summary um, of our the, the bonding model, I should say, a summary of the bonding model. So what the forces are between um, the, or where the forces are between. So we have in a metallic compound we have a strong force between cations and delocalized electrons. That's what I was saying here. This is a cation, this is delocalized electrons. Interesting fact about the this model is that the electrons can move, so they're free to move around, they're constantly moving around. And this is the reason why we can actually conduct electricity, because these electrons can move. Cations can move, um, cations can move when a force is applied. Okay, so cations move when you push the cations around. So by themselves, they're just kind of staying stationary, but when you apply a force, these guys can actually move, and that's how we get them to be malleable. When these cations move, the delocalized electrons are still floating around holding them in place. So that's the interesting thing about metallic bonds. Basically, these three dot points can be used to explain all of these properties here. Ionic compounds, we have a strong force between anions and cations. Okay? This can explain the high melting point that we have. Okay? These are formed from a transfer of electrons. Basic just explaining how ionic compounds are formed. You have a transfer of electrons. So one atom, a metal, gives the electron to the non-metal. As a solid, the ions cannot move, just as we have with this little diagram here. They're kind of linked in. So as a solid, when it's a solid, these are all linked together. But when it's a solution, these guys are all broken apart and they're moving around freely in the water. So that's the interesting thing about ionic compounds. Basically, these three dot points can be used 
to explain all the information about ionic compounds, all the properties, basically all of what we've said here, these can explain. Covalent compounds, um, strong force between atoms, so that's between this, so this is a molecule of water, two hydrogens and our oxygen here. We have a strong force holding the hydrogen and oxygen together, but what we do, have, we have a weak force between two water molecules. So we need a, a lot of energy to break this bond here, but we don't need a lot of energy to boil it because it's, the boiling is just breaking this weak force here. Covalent compounds are formed from a sharing of electrons. Okay? Very important difference between ionic, where we have a transfer, and covalent, where we have a sharing of electrons. So please note the difference between ionic, where we have a transfer, and covalent, where we have sharing. In covalent compounds, we have polarity, and we have intermolecular forces, which are the strong, um, the ones, not strong, intermolecular forces are um, very weak, but that's where a lot of emphasis is in terms of explaining properties. It's all about the intermolecular forces. So that's all I'm going to do with this summary. Just This is a brief summary to show and put basically side by side what the different um, forces, the bonding models are about, and also what the different properties are. And that is it. The next um, topic is on organic chemistry, and I'm going to get stuck straight into trying to create videos for organic chemistry. Take it easy.